today we're going to focus on critical thinking and the scientific method or scientific research. Now critical thinking is a term we've all heard of, multiple different classes, whatever it may be. We all heard critical thinking, but we need to apply it to psychology. A short abbreviated definition of critical thinking is the idea of assessing and judging something using the evidence. So when someone tells you something, when you read something online, you see a movie, article, whatever it may be, if you're using critical thinking, you are assessing and then judging based upon the evidence provided. Now to expand the definition, there are five questions that pertain to critical thinking. And I'm going to give you an example, a real life example for me, that's not about psychology. I have a friend, his name is Bernie, and Bernie is a pro-Republican. You know, he believes that the Democratic Party is the devil, if you will, the devil incarnate. No matter what president it is, as a re Democrat, he's not going to like it. And the obvious is true. If a Republican, the guy could be a buffoon, but as long as he's a Republican, Bernie is going to vote for him. Well, Bernie often sends me emails. They may have short video clips, short articles, long articles, or whatever, basically very pro-Republican. And when the Iraq war was going on, and even Afghanistan, he would send me these articles and videos basically saying the government this or government that, but again, very pro-Republican. Me, I'm in between. I really don't lean one way or the other. I really focus on the candidate and how they view with my opinions, if you will. However, Bernie likes to talk about his articles that he sends me, and he likes it. I see him quite often, and he wants to go over them with me, so I make sure I pay attention. And I critically think every time I see something from him. And the first thing I'm always going to do is I ask myself, what am I asked to believe? What am I asked to accept in this article or in this video? So step one, asked to believe, asked to accept. Then, what is the evidence provided? You know, what evidence is there? What is it provided? That, because obviously Bernie has sent me something that is pro this or pro that, and he, I know what he's believing. Well, I need to find that evidence to say what he's he gonna come back with when he wants to talk about it. Now, what I like to do is kind of be the devil's advocate here. I always like to look at additional ways to look at the information. So now he's going one way, and then I get it back and say, well, wait a second, Bernie, maybe it could be this way. So I'm looking for additional ways to view the information. If I do that, I have to make sure that I have additional ev evidence for my alternative, additional evidence for my alternative. So I'm going to say, here's what I think, Bernie, because of this, because of dot, dot, dot. And so, therefore, I can always back up my claim with that. And eventually, I'm going to reach some type of reasonable conclusion of the article. And sometimes it makes you think. I might not always agree with it, but sometimes it makes you think, like, maybe he's got something there. Um, and so, I ask, what am I asked to accept or believe? I look for the evidence. Then I find additional ways that I can think of the information. And then also looking for additional evidence and then reach some conclusion. Again, that's real life, but it, again, you'd obviously use it in psychology, and when we use it in psychology, is really research. Just because research is done doesn't mean it's good. Just because it's published doesn't mean it's good. And so you read about research, you should always ask yourself those five questions. And a newspaper that I read a lot is USA Today. Now, the USA Today commonly has psych-related articles about you know depression treatment suicide prevention alzheimer's parkinson's another just weight issue whatever it may be and i always read them but just because it's in the paper doesn't mean it's 100 percent true so i got to think and i got to critically think and think about what are these people saying what evidence is supported okay also in psychology are paranormal claims now i throw aliens in there because again with aliens, anytime people talk about aliens, you should ask. I'm not saying they don't exist, but where's the evidence? And let's look at the conclusion here. But for psychology, our ESP and these claims of extrasensory perception, this idea of mind-to-mind -mind communication, reading my thoughts, moving objects without touching them, healing power of people or whatever. And it is constantly tested in psychology to figure out, are these people, is it actually valid? Is it true? But we have to test it and we have to use critical thinking and so forth and again just to reiterate again I, I told you about these articles you know that you read someone tells you something those don't take it for what it is and even more examples and more real life examples 
you know, be very leery of what you get in the mail or what you get in email. You know, be careful of what you open. And they always read articles about the elderly being convinced to and tricked to give their social security number over, to give their account number for their bank because they think there's something wrong, they think there's a problem, or they're getting some kind of a reward. And they say, I just need to confirm your social security number. You know, you know what you get in the paper, email, whatever. Be very, very leery and always critically think, what am I being asked to accept all the way through a conclusion and then make a decision on what you're going to do. So that's critical thinking. Shifting gears a little bit here is scientific research, or we could say scientific method. We could use those interchangeably, scientific research, scientific method. Now, something that's not going to pop up there is what is the definition? If we had to define sci scientific research, how would we define it? And you define it by the procedure of gathering and collecting data. Again, scientific research is defined as a procedure to gather and collect data. And to finish that definition, you then analyze the data. That is scientific research. So it's a procedure, collecting, gathering data, but then more importantly, you have to make sure you analyze the data. In psychology, there will be two different types of scientific research that we could talk about. The first one is called basic research, basic research. The goal of basic research is to simply increase scientific knowledge, okay? In, increase the, the scientific knowledge base of all humans, the population, but we're just trying to increase knowledge. So it might be studying how IQ scores have changed over time, generation after generation. What are the attitudes of this generation versus that? advertising claims and how do we influence people. You're not trying to solve any problems, you're just trying to figure out information and again add to the scientific knowledge base. I think what we tend to think of a little more in psychology is called applied research. And just look at the word apply. With applied research, you're going to apply it to some problem, uh, to some group of people, to some issue. For example, you know, helping people with dep depression, preventing suicide. Parkinson, Alzheimer's, the list can go on and on, and there's always new medications that are brought out to the public. Well, those have to be tested, and so therefore you might be testing your medication for depression or Alzheimer's uh, before you want to obviously release it to the public and all that kind of stuff. That would be applied research, or even a therapy technique. Does this therapy technique help people with whatever is bothering them? So those would be the two different types of research that we could talk about. Now, when you conduct scientific research or you follow the scientific method, there is a step-by-step -step process that you should take, okay, that you should take. And here's what it looks like here. Okay, there's a lot going on, I know, a lot of different steps and so forth, but it's not that complicated. And we'll go through it step-by-step-by-step, by step by step, adding a few terms as we go here. The first one up here in red, asking a question. Now, with asking a question, as a psychologist, you're sitting there one day and you say, you're thinking about some topic or something like things go through your head you know you're looking for a new study and you're asking questions and you know maybe at some point hypothetically you're thinking that you know every time you see you know a brightly colored shirt or you wear brightly colored clothes or something like that you kind of feel better about yourself or maybe it's when you wear the darks and grays and black and white you feel kind of down and gloomy and you're like that's eh, kind of interesting why do I feel more upbeat when I wear brightly colored clothes and so then you have to do step two here in this orange you need to do background research. You have to ask yourself, has anyone else studied this before? Because you may say, well, I have a thoughts and I have questions. Well, maybe it's already been answered. So you better do the research to figure out, has it ever been answered? Now, let's say hypothetically, what you're talking about has not been researched. Then you're going to construct your hypothesis. Now, I throw this up here on the terms and concept list because hypothesis is on our list, a term that you need to know. A hypothesis is a prediction. Okay, it's going to be before research, but it is a prediction of what you think. So going back to that question here, and we're going to tweak it a little bit here. Let's say my hypothesis, my prediction becomes bright colors make people happier. So very simple. Bright colors make people happier. That is my hypothesis. That is my prediction that I need to now test. And so in green here, we're going to test with an experiment. With testing notes comes two more terms. 
operational definition, and then the word variable. Let's focus on operational definition first. Operational definition really has two definitions, in my opinion. The first one is you, for operational definition, you are defining the variables. You know, what is the operational of this variable? What is the operational definition of that variable? But you are defining variables, and I'll come back to that in a moment here. The second part of operational definition is you want to define the steps, to define the operations, lay it all out and say, okay, step one, what did I do? Step two, I did this. Step 100, here's what I did. You need to do that so that your study can be replicated. And that'll be a term I'll show you in a second, replication. But you want someone else to be able to duplicate it, replicate it, and that would be operational definition. Now, you also then have variables, another term you need to know here. With variables, variables are things that you manipulate or that you control. Now, when we deal with experiments uh, explicitly there, we'll talk about different kind of variables. But right now, variables are things that you manipulate, things that you control. Now, let's go back to operational definition here. The first definition that I really think the AP people figure out and focus on is what are the operational definition of different variables? Well, if you think about the hypothesis here I just had, bright colors make people happier. There are two variables that we're going to study, and therefore two variables that we need to define so that there is no open interpretation of these here. And so the first one, of course, is going to be what is a bright color? You can't leave it open for interpretation. You can't say, well, well, you'll figure it out. No. I mean, just looking at this chart here, you may say that this yellow is a bright color and this green is a bright color, but this type of red is not a bright color. But purple, pink are not bright colors. It's entirely up to you, but you'd have to define it and say, here's what a bright color is, here's what I'm going to test. The second variable then becomes, what is happiness? Because if we brought in 30 people, they may all define happiness in a different way. So you'd have to say, what truly is happiness? And it probably would be defined with some type of survey that people take before the experiment and after the experiment. And then once you do that, okay, now you're down to here. You're going to get data. You're going to analyze the results. And that's data. And so a person would take a survey before. How do you feel? Simple five, ten questions, something like that. Then they're inundated. They're shown a lot of bright colors for however long you want to do that for, which would have to be also defined. And then you get data. And you compare the results, compare the data uh, from the two. If your hypothesis is false, that's OK. Think again. Try again. Because maybe your variables need to be redefined. Maybe you got to tweak something a little bit. That's OK to be wrong the first time, even the second time. Go back, tweak it. But maybe your hypothesis is true. If it's true, and either way, you're going to report your results. But once it's true, you report your results, and that becomes your theory. A theory is a final statement. A theory is, here is my statement, and a key word for theory is explanation. I'm going to explain my statement, not describe. Describing would be coming up here. I'm going to describe a bright color. I'm going to describe the happiness. Theory is I'm going to explain what I did, explain why my theory is what it is. Okay, And that would be the steps of the scientific research. Lastly here, here are some related terms to research and kind of looking at research in different ways here. The first one is called confirmation bias. First and foremost, confirmation bias is a negative. You do not want to conduct and engage in confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is you only look for evidence to support your belief. You only look for evidence to then confirm your belief. And so my friend Bernie, he gets a lot of maybe articles or something like that. He's only going to look for things that confirm what he says. Or I may say something, but he's going to ignore other things I've said, but really focus on what confirms his own opinion not a good thing in life. The next one is called hindsight bias. Hindsight bias has another phrase we could have, I knew it all along. I knew it all along. And you have people who commonly will say, oh, I knew that. <coughs> Excuse me. And therefore, I knew it all along. Well, no, you didn't. You learned it somewhere. So hindsight bias is another negative when you catch people, I knew that all along. Well, how? Why did you know that? Next term here, I mentioned just a moment ago here, is replicate or replication. 
and with replicate or replication, it's duplicate. You want somebody to be able to duplicate your experiment. And that's by defining all the variables and defining the steps so that they can duplicate it. You might not get the same exact results, but it should come pretty close. And the last two terms that go together, and we'll talk about them a lot through this year, is reliability and validity. Simple definitions right now, reliability is consistency, validity is accuracy. And think about reliability. If you said, yeah, my friend, he or she is reliable. Well, that means they're always there for you. And so in research or even a, a test will say it's reliable, meaning you're going to get the same results each and every time. Again, very close. If it's valid, that's accuracy. That the results are true. They are accurate. They're not false. Because we can conduct research and it could be very poor research and get the same results every time. You say, oh, it's reliable. Well, maybe the research is flawed. Maybe there's a mistake happening, but you do the same mistake every time. So it's not valid. Even like a test. I can give you a test and you fail every time. So it's reliable, but it doesn't make it valid. And so you want things to be both. The AP exam is both. It is a reliable test and it is a valid test. It's consistent and it's accurate. And those are the terms and kind of concepts related and surrounding both critical thinking and scientific research, the scientific method.